There you go, Ashasi University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa. Duraplast, where Duraplast goes, water flows. Heaven mosquito spray and coil pleasant on humans, tough nightmare on insects. And Napa Foods, it is tasty. DBS Industries and Robert and & Sons Limited Optical Services, your comprehensive eye service, eye care service provider. Now, we are going to the Supreme Court to check how far Johnson Esiedun Katia, who is testifying for John Mahama, is doing. Uh, let's listen to him briefly, and also Frank Davis, who is one of the lead lawyers for Nana Akufuado, and Dr. Dominic Ayene, who is also part of the team uh, for John Mahama. You that you are wrong because the current situation is the reality. The court deals with reality, not conjecture. I'm suggesting that you. My Lord, the current situation cannot be the reality because nobody knows the results of the presidential elections in 2020. Nobody knows in exactitude how many votes each of the candidates got and what percentage each of the candidates got. It is not true that the first respondent padded any votes as you allege. I'm putting it to you. Uh, my Lord, I, 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 I decline that, to, that, that, that assertion. Now, sir, we are not in court to try to declare another presidential uh, results by us. We are in court to challenge the performance of a constitutional duty of a first respondent and to see whether that duty has been discharged faithfully. If that is so, then I'm suggesting to you that you are not, by your own showing, you are not in the right forum. I decline that, my lord. Played out so that we can properly confront the witness with his own acts and that of the petitioner together with leading members of his party on the issue whether or not they declared to the Ghanaian public that petitioner had won the election. These are persons who after or during the course of the elections had proclaimed to Ghanaians. In fact, the presidential candidate himself, John Dramani Mahama, the general secretary, John Siasi Dunketia, the deputy general secretary, Utokuno, the director of elections, Evisafi Anka, and their communication officer, Sami Jenfi, had proclaimed to the whole of Ghana and the world that their presidential candidate had won the presidential elections and they had secured, some were saying 140 seats in parliament, others were saying 141, others were mentioned that they were not even sure. And when they proclaimed that they had won the presidential elections, they gave you percentages. Don't pretend as if you didn't hear. They gave percentages. And some of them were calling the presidential candidate president-elect. I think I recall, Sami Jemfi, a communication officer, referred to Mama as the president-elect. Some of them even urged him to form a parallel government. Now when they are being invited to the police, there's another story. They advised him to run a parallel government because they had won the elections. Now these are the same South people
who now when come to court cannot even tell how many votes they garnered. And I ask him for a rerun. Does that sit well with you? And you think it sits well with Ghanaians? No. We want the unconstitutional conduct of Jin Mensa to be held to account. Secondly, we want the court to declare that none of the candidates met the, the threshold requirements of Article 63, Clause 3 of the Constitution. That is the, 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 the crux of our case. And that is the case that we have sought to make in court today with a witness statement of uh, the General Secretary of our party. Now, it is far from being the case that John Dramani Mahama himself must testify in this matter. He has filed a petition. He is, he is entitled as of right under the law to call witnesses in aid of his case. And that is what he has done. So you had uh, Frank Davis, uh, former president of the Ghana Bar Association, Accra. Um, we used to call him the Mugabe because he was president for a long time. And then Dominic Ayene, former uh, deputy attorney general, and he's MP, uh, Boga East, and a member of John Mahama's legal team. As I introduced to you earlier, Yao Pong is right here in the studio. He is a member of Akufado's legal team. Joining us via Zoom, uh, Martin Pebu, a private legal practitioner. He's a rights activist, has led uh, a number of major reforms in our legal system. And Dennis Ajay Jumo, also a private legal practitioner, has an interest in the juvenile justice uh, system and doing a lot of work in that area. Good morning and welcome to you guys. Morning. Good morning, Sam. Great. Hello, Dennis. Let's test your, your microphone. Good morning. I, I hope it's okay. Great, great, great. Okay. So, um, Dennis, do, Dennis, do you feel that the NDC or the uh, John Mahama's lawyers are somewhat vindicated by what transpired yesterday, I want us to start on that note, that they said that according to the new rule, CI-99, they're supposed to be five days for pre-trial. Yesterday, we were in a situation where almost the entire day would have been, if you like, quote-unquote, wasted on some sort of pre-trial CMC or case management matters, which should have been done earlier. What do you say? It's, thank you very much, Samson. Uh, what I would say for a start is that let's all agree that ordinarily the Supreme Court is not a, a trial court. The trial court happens to be the high court, the circuit court, and the district court. But in terms of the court with original jurisdiction in presidential matters, is that of the Supreme Court, and that, and when it comes to constitutional matters. Same as that. I quite remember when we were doing the case of Smiley Baby was at the Mudramani Sakande, which was the first constitutional case that had to go through trial. But only that the trial was abandoned because the, at the point in time, the plaintiff discontinued. These issues came up where the rules are not expressly stated on saying. And so we should all concede that one on patent on the face of the rules, in terms of CI 16 as amended by CI 19, they are silent on some of these trial issues which are well catered for by CI 47. Now, the interesting bit that we also have to observe is that with regards to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court says that where its rules are silent, it's up to the Supreme Court to determine how it will be governed by the rules. So in, in effect, there is no wrong that the Supreme Court might have done in terms of its decision that it will take. And if you want to uh, practice and, and present anything to go by, you realize that in 2013, in terms of production of documents, the court flatly rejected the argument that was made by the petitioners for production of do for documents to be produced when they made a formal application for same mm. on grounds that it's already there where the plaintiff had copies of same. But in, in, in ordinary times, in case of high court, when we are doing trial, the court can order for discovery of documents to be done. 
And all these things apply. So it, it therefore dovetails to my suggestion from earlier on in our discussion that we have had is that I think that it's time for us to have a substantive rule that govern election petition based on our history. So that these issues, because it's also highly political, when you have a situations where senior lawyers come from court, decides to engage the media, which violates the rules, uh, the, the uh, ethical rules, because of the political interest on it, I think that one, I don't think anybody is vindicated. I think that the Supreme Court is has a mandate to do what it did because we all do concede that CI 16 is silent on some of these detailed rules. And so the Supreme Court is the one that decides to chart us apart. But we need to have a situation. Something I can hear you. Hello? Having that court say that where the rules don't provide for a specific matter, then they will decide, as it were, what to do. But is, should that be left to their election and discretion when there are rules already provided in the high court rules that they can rely on? Now, but the, 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 the point of the question was, don't you think that if they had allowed for the witness statements to be filed, and then for press, uh, pre, uh, pre-trial conference or case management to be done, what, is ha what we saw happen yesterday would have been avoided. Again, okay. uh, you see Akotampa needed to have a video played. If uh, a CMC or case management conference is done, all this would have been sorted out. Is that not the case? Um, it, 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 it would have been, just to be straight, but that notwithstanding, this is not strange. In, in previous, before we passed the amendment to our CI 47, which allowed witness statement to occur, where people had to go into the box and testify in terms of giving their oral testimony, where lawyers would get up and object to saying, these were things that happened. But I do concede the fact that we have come far and we could have actually gone about it in a better way, i.e. allowing for discovery of documents, among other factors. Okay. But what they have done, they have the right to chart their path, but we think that to, uh, to, to forestall some of these disagreements, among other factors, a detailed rule spelled out in every detail that we have in CI 47 on election petition would, would greatly assist us. The, the second other issue that we need to converse is they went for a review uh, over the decision to reject their application for uh, interrogatories. Seven judges earlier didn't find that there was merit in that application. Two additional judges, uh, Justices uh, Henry Tamensa Bonsu and then Amadou uh, Tanko, came and joined. So unanimous at the first point, unanimous at the second point. The commentary out there in the public is that the petitioner is not doing well enough in the courtroom if he's rejected by seven and rejected by you know uh, uh, nine nine judges something uh, you and i as practitioners will, will not be surprised by what is happening in court in terms of review if you look at the statistics on the review cases that has been given detailed ruling, there, and, and I need to make an explanation, that there is a distinction between a bench ruling where the court listens to it and decides to give its ruling there and then, and there's one that the court will go back and give a detailed ruling. Sometimes you do not have access to the bench ruling because sometimes it's so short in terms of giving it. But if you take your time and spend time going through all the review cases that has been brought, about 95% of them are dismissed. And, and these are things that practitioners are not surprised when you bring it. And I give a practical example. When we did Adamu Dramani Sakande in a constitutional matter, we had Justin Ebuad Jasdoche agreeing with us in terms of our plenary legal objections to the jurisdiction of the court. So it was a 5 2 decision. We went for a review and it was a 9 0 decision. Hmm. Sometimes the court even tells you that they are also entitled to make a wrong. And when they even make a wrong, it's not for you to come and re argue again before them. So 
review sometimes is very, very difficult. And if you're a practitioner and your review is dismissed, it doesn't mean you did not do a good work. Okay, thank you and very much. Cases Martin. where you, you, you get yeah. some of these results. So it oh. is not strange that the court, mm. you know, maintained its strictness when it comes to the scope of review mm. and, and decided on saying, so as to not allow further appeal All where right. people couch their uh, okay. uh, review. Thank as, you. Not thank like you very much, Dennis. Now, now, Martin, uh, same set of questions to you. Uh, what do you make of the outright rejection of the review um, a second time? <laughs> no, not re rejection of the interrogatories a second time. And what transpired yesterday, and which leads me to ask the question, is the uh, John Mahama team not vindicated? And is the lack of case management not coming back to hurt the court, so to speak. Okay. So, um, Thompson, the first one, the uh, dismissal of the review application. Um, you know, Sam, from the practice, and as uh, Dennis has uh, eloquently referred to some of the cases, it's not surprising at all that it was dismissed. But the saving grace is this. Mr. Mahmoud's lawyers can ask those questions in cross-examination. So for me, from day one, I always said, well, nothing much has been lost. But, of course, but, we but, know that. But, 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 but Chachuchi Kata put that question uh, back to uh, Professor Mensa Bonsu. If, if you are saying, I cannot do it today because it is not relevant, why does it become relevant the next day? Oh, well... Sam, but that's how the rule is always been stated. That you know, uh, it's expressly stated in Order 22, is it Rule 16, that if your interrogatories are rejected, it doesn't stop you from asking in cross examination. So for that, that Chachu and uh, uh, this uh, his student, they should have that banter. I don't want to get it too much, right? <laughs> so for me, bottom line, in cross examination. Mr. Chikata can ask those questions. So that's it. Justice will be done. Okay. Yeah. Now, on the matter now, of. Now, the, Chachu, uh, Chachu, Chachu and his student, uh, and the student who is our favorite teacher, mm -hmm. said Chachu was seeking to cross a bridge when the mm -hmm. time had not come. Don't you, don't you appreciate that point? That when they get into cross examination, mm -hmm. they may face a hedge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that it is not as if it is so automatic no. that they can they can do what they are being disallowed from doing now in cross examination. Yes, you have a point. Theoretically, it's possible for the court to stop Mr. Chikata. Okay, but practically, you see how Mr. Chikata read the case from uh, Yaradua, the Nigerian case. This case is not just being fought purely on legal grounds. There's also the political angle. They have come to court to ventilate, okay? There is a grievance. So there is that margin that the court ought to give them. Let them ask, as long as it's within the time allotted for cross-examination. Let them ask. That's the way they see their case. And don't, let's not also forget, in cross-examination, a wider latitude is given to counsel. That's right. To conduct his cross examination, the court doesn't interrupt too much. Mm. So, based upon these principles, I'm optimistic that those questions that they sought to ask. Okay. Quite now let's go to let's go to the second out. part of what is what appears to be uh, now be to be stalling what would have been a very smooth running um, cross examination time. Yeah, Sam, that one. It's quite a, a, a checkered story in terms of, if you look at the practice, what happened yesterday, you have it also happening in uh, some of the trial courts where some judges will tell you that they will not take the objections to admissibility at the case management conference. They say no, they will take it uh, during the trial because they want to go by Section 6 of the Evidence Act, which says that make uh, make your objection at the time the evidence is being tendered. So for me, yesterday's decision by the Supreme Court to go straight into the trial and to take objections 
uh, as and when a document is being sent, it, it's not surprising. I've seen it play out over there. But I also see, and most especially because of the timelines. So to be very candid, my uh, sympathies are with the court because you see, once again, we are back to the timelines. The time is running out. Yesterday, by the uh, school of thought that I belong to, yesterday, 29th, was the 30th of the uh, commencement of the trial, so that we are left with 12 days. That's the school of thought I subscribe to. So uh, how, come, that... how, come, how come the rule, say, the rule you are referring to says the judgment will be in March, and you are counting to end it now? Yes, so my, I've, I've always said it, that I still want to stay with the 42nd day because they just said 42nd day. They didn't say 42nd certain day. Yes, 42nd so day. They said 42nd day, which is mm -hmm. in March. Yes. So That's I what the rule the says. In this context, as surplusage, it was unnecessary until they amend the rules to make very clear. Because if you say 42nd day, I can count 42 days. I don't see anything in within the rules that says that I shouldn't count some days. You remember, I've been making this reference to, I've been making a reference to Article 11 of our Constitution, mm. which says that if you want to make a constitutional instrument in Parliament, when you lay it, it should be uh, allowed for 21 certain days. Sam, my emphasis is on the word certain days. It's in the Constitution, mm. Article 11. So what I'm saying is that in our vocabulary within Ghana, in legislative drafting, we know how to put certain days when we want to do it. Now, and now, now but, but, Martin, do it. But, but Martin, the second schedule mm -hmm. is very clear. It says timelines for determination of presidential petition. Mm -hmm. Then you have process, action, duration. Yes. At process, number one, you are filing and service. Yes. Action, there's nothing there. Duration, January. Mm -hmm. Then you have the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, then in the very final one, the sixth, mm -hmm. to uh, 20, 42nd day. Yes. Action, judgment, duration, March. Mm. Why, why, the, why the confusion? Well, like you said, maybe... Uh, Look, to be candid, that's why they say two lawyers looking at an issue may not agree. For me, I've taken the part that makes sense to me. Mm. I don't need the match to make further sense. All right. But the second day is clear. Sam, let me add this last point. You know, in the first ruling that the Chief Justice gave, um, what date is that? He said the timelines are strict. Yes, the ruling on submission of witness statement. Right. So uh, I see it as an indication of where the court is tilting. And then, but Sam, you know that in practice, eh, we may come to the same thing. Good. Mm. There's this, uh, you know, there's a, is it 2001, the case of ex party uh, PPE. The, in, in the case of ex party PPE, it was said that when the rules give a judge a time within which to submit a judgment, and he doesn't, come, uh, he's not able to submit within that time, it doesn't render the judgment void. So let's say if we can conduct the trial for the next uh, 10 or so days left and finish on the 42nd day, the judgment can come beyond the 42nd day and it's already within the Supreme Court uh, judgment. So mm. practically, maybe we will meet middle of the road. All right. All right. Um, um, thank you. Now, let me come to the studio briefly, uh, with uh, starting with Yao. Um, so... <laughs> Dennis has a certain concern yeah. that in the practice, Dennis has a certain concern. He, he says in the practice, we, we don't comment on our cases before or after. Why is it that in this one, there seems to be a place provided for press conference after the, after the hearings? And uh, you hear Frank Davis do that thing. He says... Uh, Zero something something zero nine zero eight all of that. Nil. <laughs> Where is that from? <laughs> well, well, I mean, thank you very much. Um, as it were, I mean, you know, the law is a combination of practice and what we actually call law, and so the practice is also important. 
for the Supreme Court itself or under its supervision to provide a space for lawyers to comment on the matter. I think that it is a tacit acceptance that they may not have any problem with it. As far as I'm concerned, if I comment on a matter that has been ruled on, and Supreme Court is the final court for this matter, it's not as if it's even a high court, you expect an appeal. So that decision becomes a final decision for me. But listening to some of your, your commentators, mm. both sides, NPP and DC, including those that have been specifically designated to speak as communication members, do you think they are doing it the way you are talking about, commenting on a matter that has been ruled on? Because you hear them actually comment on the substantive matter and, well, I mean, and perform the job of the judges ahead of what they are supposed to, to do. To be honest, I think um, the, in the course of all this um, um, expression of the emotions mm -hmm. on one side, maybe excitement when one wins and so on, well, there will be excesses involuntarily. At the end of the day, I am of the school of thought that I will, as much as possible, I'm conscious of commenting on matters that have been disposed of alone. We are human. We may sometimes in the heat also inadvertently refer to or make a comment or two. Mm. And over time, people have been spoken to right. to ensure that as much as possible, there should be a conscious effort mm. not to touch on matters that are yet to be determined. Right. Let me get Domin to say something briefly about that. And yeah. also because you have had the opportunity to be sort of a leader of the bar yeah. from the Attorney General's department. Um, and there are people who have expressed concerns about yeah. previous leaders of the bar because of their leadership yeah. and the comments they are making. Mm -hmm. uh, because there are many who are watching. There are many who will get inspired through this process to become lawyers. And they may not think that there are actually rules that govern us. Right. And Dennis is concerned. How are things supposed to be done? I've heard some seniors say, but why are they not designating lawyers who have practice experience? But there are some lawyers who have no practice experience whatsoever. Yeah. And you hear them, and it's, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, uh, something we, <clears throat> that's a, an excellent point that Dennis made. I think he made a point uh, just before I walked in. And I was uh, very pleased, you know, to listen to him um, expatiate on that one. And, and that is because I think as lawyers, and uh, as uh, Yao had just said, we, we need to be conscious of the ethical boundaries, you know, as well as the professional, you know, I mean, the rules that govern the way we conduct <clears throat> our affairs. If a layman consciously or unconsciously comments on a pending matter, and, you know, you can forgive him. But if, it, if it, you are a lawyer and then you do that, all right, you, you violate the sub judicial rule. And that is why, in our case, you would notice that we have two teams. We have the team that does the advocacy before the bar, and then we have the <clears throat> spokespersons who are like myself, Marietta, and Eduji and Co., who are, you know, <clears throat> not doing the advocacy before the bar. It was consciously done in other you know, not to violate the rule that Dennis was good. I think he's, uh, um, <clears throat> I, I've, I've forgotten the specific, I mean, there's, I mean uh, the specific this, uh, I mean, yeah, section. We, we all you know, we all yeah. It. Yeah. But, but, but basically what it says is that when you are the lawyer in charge of the, the matter, you know, you should not comment on it in a way uh, that, uh, you know, undermines the sub judicial rule. You should and not so, even comment on it at all. You should not comment on mm. it, I mean, at all. But of course, it is in order to, I mean, a safeguard against breaches of the sub judicial rule. So I, I think that it's important that mm. those ethical boundaries, you know, adhere to. And, and you know, I mean, I put it right when he said, when the Supreme Court has made a decision, okay, and, you know, it's now uh, functus official with respect to that matter, Lawyers can comment on it. Come, you know, I mean, uh, uh, people can even begin to write articles, either agreeing or disagreeing and so on. Right. So the fact that in this petition matter, um, they have provided an opportunity. I mean, I don't know how it came about, but mm. we, we have the, I mean, the media set up for us to be able to explain to the, the country what is happening. I think that that is in itself is a recognition mm. by the judiciary that this is, I mean, a one particular case in which there may be the need for the, I mean, a, 
uh, lawyers or for persons involved in the matter to talk to the country. Of course, is the reason it is still cast. Yeah. Right, that, that yeah. they said it in the um, uh, Sebon's case, the contempt case, mm. that yeah. sometimes it is even disheartening that lawyers do not criticize our judgments enough. Mm. Of course, you use decorous language. Right. Yeah. And that is, that's the case. You know also that the whole world is watching mm. and listening. So it is important that the lawyers come out mm. and situate it in the um, parameters in which the decision was made. Right. But not to misrepresent. Of course. No, no, as not at team, all. As your okay. team tends to. Oh, no, no. Uh, but that would be <laughs> unfair. So let's continue. That would be very let's, unfair. Let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> so there there <clears throat> are those who are suggesting that the, the witness, mm -hmm. uh, Johnson Asiye um, may not be doing your case a lot of good by emphatically saying, I am not the witness, I am not the petitioner, no. I am not the petitioner. No, I, I think that that is misunderstood. You know, look at the nature of the questions posed to him in respect of which he said, I am not the petitioner. Because those were matters that required an inquiry into the personal knowledge. Okay, the petitioner knew that he had lost. So what, that was the, the state of mind of the petitioner at the point in time that the event occurred. Now, in respect of that, I said in Ketia is not John Ramani Mahama. He is not going to be able to say whether or not at the point in time that the declaration was done, John Mahama knew, you know, or even ought reasonably to have known that he has lost the election. Because there are a lot of variables that, I mean, uh, come into play. Did John Mahama have the full complement of the data, you know, announced at that point in time to be able to know whether or not he lost the election and so on? So if you look at the questions, is the questions posed by counsel that, you know, I mean, uh, elicited those responses. <laughs> so it is not the case that um, general is simply saying, I am not a petitioner, and therefore I will not be able to speak to the petition. I is mean, it, he has is spoken it, is to it the also petition. The case that, is it also the case that for the petitioner not availing himself to testify <clears throat> and for his uh, testimony or his evidence, to be tested in the judicial process, it might have an impact on, on his case? No, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, a part, I mean, a party to an action can call witnesses to, in support of his or her case without necessarily testifying himself, all right? Um, so the, the course of action is, avail I mean, is available to him under the Constitution <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, I, I mean uh, CI 16 as amended by CI 99. But that doesn't mean that he must, you know, personally testify so as to sort up the probative value of the evidence that is going to be given. Mm. You know, I, I, I don't think that that is, uh, you know, that is required. Of course, I think there is an analogy which I have seen on Facebook being made of the fact that Baumia was one of the petitioners and then he testified. All right. Now, Baumia didn't testify in his capacity as a, a petitioner. He testified as a witness you know, uh, for and on behalf of... Oh, but Nanado I think Dankar that is strange. No, yeah. that is it. No, that he was, was a party. He was no. a petitioner. <clears throat> yes, but... but Nana a petitioner. Kupadu. He testified, so he for, testified himself, for himself. And for the you, other you know, two petitioners. And for Nanado and Jacob Stric Bilamte. Strictly, strictly, I mean, um, Nanado was the petitioner. Oh. He, he, I mean, if you go by, if you go by the, the, the rules as formulated, and the constitutional It is only in this CI-99 <coughs> we didn't regulate to, uh, 2013 yes. petition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Under that, in fact, there is even a controversy because the constitution only says a citizen of Ghana. Yes. Right. And then the yes. rules, CI-99 now says that the only the part. person who is affected and against the one who made the declaration yes. and the one whose declaration or who has been declared mm -hmm. become the parties. Yes. Mm -hmm. So CI-99, at that time, there was no rule about who was actually, so you don't look on the face of the petition. Mm. And the petition, there were three. Mm. <laughs> Nana Kufuado, Dr. Baumia, and Jacob Echebelamte. And right. as far as I'm concerned, that, mm. um, Dr. Baumia gave evidence for himself as a party and for the two others. But right. I think, I think it's... So it's let, me, let me, let me, let me get you say, briefly on yeah. this, then I'll take our final break yeah. and return. Yeah. The, the, what happened in court today, we have heard commentary no, yesterday. that suggests yesterday, yesterday. <laughs> we have heard commentary uh, from your side, that suggests that we told you so. Yeah. There are five days for pre-trial. <clears throat> what was the hurry? You needed to go through all of this to clean everything before you start the trial. Yeah. So you know, that, that was, for me, sitting down and watching the Supreme Court um, struggle with the issues, 
uh, yesterday. Um, for me, that was really very tragic because it was a missed opportunity to have conducted the CMC, I mean the case management conference, uh, for us to deal with some of the practicalities of the trial. Okay, because as Denny said, the Supreme Court is not your typical trial court. And that is why the drafters of the Constitution saw it fit, you know, to provide in Article 190, I mean, uh, 129 Clause 4, that when it is faced with the kind of situation that it is faced with in this petition, it assumes the powers, okay, all the powers. It shall, and it's mandatory, it shall assume all the powers of a lower court. Of course, if it is on appeal, that is easier to deal with. But you are exercising original jurisdiction in an election petition. And you, you are referred to Article uh, what, two, I mean, uh, two, uh, 129, Clause 4, for purposes of exercising powers, uh, you know, pursuant to CI uh, 47. And you reject that. Then the practicalities arise, and there are no rules in CI 99 governing those. So you remember the banter between, uh, Mr., not, not a, the banter, the um, exchange, exchange, you know, between uh, Mr. Akotoampao and Justice um, Nene Amegaiche, where Akotoampao was now trying to bring in the CI 47 regime uh, for purposes of dealing with the novel introducing situation. Introducing the that, video. Introducing the video. And then, um, you know, Justice uh, Nene Amegaiche was quick to tell him that, look, we are not applying that regime now. All right, but in, again, something. If we are not applying that regime, where in CI 99 or CI 16 do we have the witness statements? You know, I mean, a, a process mm. that you can file witness statements mm. instead of giving viva voce evidence as happened in two, I mean, uh, 2016. Okay. And I just just to make a uh, point uh, that uh, Martin had, uh, you know, I mean, uh, raised. You see, in the High Court, usually, especially with criminal trials. When you file your witness statements, it is possible for objections to be taken to certain portions, for them to be expunged before testimony is actually given and cross-examination is taken. Now, certain judges in the High Court will say, oh, because of Section 6 of the evidence decree, until you have tendered it, no objections can be raised. Yeah, but those but judges are in the minority. Yeah, in the minority. Yeah. The, the majority of judges you know, tend to allow for you to do that at case management in order to save time. If we had done the case management conference, you know, pursuant to the uh, five-day time frame provided by CR99, we wouldn't have been faced with the right. situation. So as you move forward, saw, yes. there is a possibility that when you are going to cross-examine the witnesses on the other side, yeah. you may now also raise issues with some of the portions of the right. their witness <coughs> statement, and the court will have to pause and then do that before right. it moves on. Now, the, 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 the question came up as to why Akutuampa will not lay what you normally know as a foundation and introduce the video, by, but make an application to introduce but Something before then. Let, okay. I think I need to make a comment mm. about this uh, case management. Right, right. You know, the framers of this CI-99 were careful not to use the word case management. Okay. They used pre-trial. Pre yes. At the time, CI-87, which made provision for case management, had been enacted. But they decided not to adopt that term. As case money, they said pre trial. Yeah. What happened yesterday? Was it post trial? It was pre trial. No. These matters came up before trial commenced. And the definition of pre trial is just so simple. No, but in yeah. or relating no, but to yeah. that's a second. But yeah, the witness had been sworn in and he was going to start. Yeah, but I'm saying nice. that yeah. nothing stopped okay. um, us. And as, as you said, I mean, uh, to be honest, there is a case pending before the Supreme Court where all these matters will be streamlined. I, have, okay. I even commented it in my book. What oh, is the status of a statement of uh, a witness statement yeah. after case management? Okay. I have, I have asked that question. All right. You are, you're going it, to read it. Nice something. So the simple definition of pre-trial is yeah. in or relating to period before a judicial trial. And because the Supreme Court didn't take the attitude of some of the judges at the High Court, I know it is emerging that Unless you raise issues at the case management stage, it is as if you are bound by it. So I suggested in the book, then we should then take an oath just after the pre-trial stage so that as soon as we go to the court, cross-examination starts. Otherwise, the um, witness statement, it is not in evidence. Yeah. Mm. And so uh, you cannot compel me to ask questions about it. So um, our friend, Wabin, 
Safubo, I mean, he has raised the issue, okay. even though in a criminal case. Okay. It's pending before the Supreme Court. I was there when it was moved. And all the judges, including the Chief Justice, agreed that it is an issue that has to be determined. All right. And the Chief Justice even said that perhaps a practice direction properly so called will be raised. Right. So for me, mm. once these matters came up before the trial, doesn't matter whether after oath, it is still pre-trial. Right. They could have let's, used let's case management. But again, we'll take, a, we'll, we'll take a break here. Trial, we'll return to continue with uh, your and our <laughs> other colleagues on the on Zoom. We'll be right back. <laughs> You're welcome back. This is News File, it's the most authoritative news analysis platform. Uh, in the next 10 minutes, we'll converse a few of the uh, pertinent issues for you. My guest, Dr. Dominic Ayene, uh, member of the legal team, John Mahama, and his uh, MP, Boga East, Martin Pebu, uh, Dennis Ejay Jumo, and Yao Opong. Yao Opong is member of Akofuadu's legal team. And a couple of senior lawyers uh, want me to uh, share this that the high court rules don't automatically apply under rule 5 of the C of the supreme court rule the supreme court is to prescribe where there is a lacuna that prescription could be to adopt a ci 47 procedure but it doesn't automatically apply thank you very much senior uh, uh, another one says i don't think there is a need for a new set of rules exclusively on election petitions for the Supreme Court. Everything they need has already been provided. That's my humble view. And I'll share this very last one. says that uh, on the issue of the lawyers commenting after the case, some are doing terribly. And Davis's side has to take much of the blame. All right. Great. So, <laughs> so quickly, yeah. uh, so, uh, you say the matter that is of great importance to you is the question of the petitioner not uh, testifying. Why so? Yes, basically. I mean, and, and as Dr. Aini said, mm. there is this uh, in Ria Shalbutri, Lance Ajete Abosu and others versus Kote and others. It's 2003, 2004 Supreme Court of Ghana Law Report, page 420. Um, Mrs. Georgina Wood, then JSC, before she became CJ, said that, well, a party, and let me just quickly, mm. admittedly, in most all of, in almost all civil actions, a party them parties themselves do not testify as key witnesses. Without dispute, that is most worthy and prudent. No, parties do testify as key witnesses. Without uh, dispute, that is most worthy and prudent step to take. Where the disputed facts happen to be within their personal knowledge. Indeed, where the nature of the dispute calls for a party's personal testimony, he cannot avoid the witness box. Mm. But, she says, of course, that is, but I know of no rule of law which states that a party will succeed in his case only if he testifies at the trial. Are you going to be quoting this in your address to tell the court that uh, John Mohammed's we, 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 well, uh, evidence is not uh, tested and therefore... It ought to suffer. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, I'm not in that with such a um, <laughs> spirit of premonition. <laughs> but the point I'm making is that that said, mm. when you take petitions, I've made the point in even divorce, that petitions in a special way are personal. And that is why, especially until recently, a petition for dissolution of a marriage had to be signed by the petitioner in person. And I've always opposed where petitioners give power of attorney to other persons to give evidence. Mm. But in a presidential election, as the practices, and when you check, Mr. Mahama, for example, signed the petition himself. Yeah. <clears throat> so it is a very personal matter. And being a constitutional matter, I just came across something interesting in Kunye here in Acha. 93-94, two Ghana law report, 525. Mm. At 590, read. Now to the main issue in controversy between the parties, I think it will be pertinent at this stage to remind ourselves of the standard of proof required to sustain declarations of the nature being sought by the plaintiff in the constitutional matter. In my respectful view, the standard of proof is the, uh, the standard of proof is very high since the constitution 1992, the supreme law of the land, which the defendants have also sworn to defend and any violation of his provisions is normally punishable. 
The standard must therefore be equated to that required in penal cases. This will demand that the plaintiffs, in order to succeed, must rely on, on the strength of their own case mm -hmm. by proving <coughs> beyond doubt, even though it's a civil matter, mm -hmm. beyond doubt that the actions of the defendants which they have provoked, which have provoked their action, is unconstitutional. <coughs> interesting. Dominic. <laughs> Very that, that's, yeah, that, that's very interesting, but uh, of course it does not, I mean, uh, mean, okay, that, you know, uh, a petitioner in, in, in a, because he's raising, challenging the validity of an election must necessarily, t I mean, uh, testify. I don't think that that is the effect but, but something of... something uh, is lost, uh, is that not? Something is lost. I, I don't think anything is mm. lost. You see, okay. the case that uh, my learned friend Yao cited, Okay, um, you know, I mean, uh, where, Bode, yeah, the Ashalbode case in which uh, Georgina Wood, JSC, as she then was said, it will be worthy and prudent if the party, you know, testifies. But she was also at pains to say that that is where the disputed facts are within the personal knowledge. All right, now look at an election petition. Are you saying that for every presidential candidate, everything that occurs within the 275 constituencies, and the 30, over 39 or 38,000 polling stations are within the personal knowledge of the presidential candidate. That Therefore, cannot be. the comparison with divorce. Yes, may be it, very, it cannot. It yeah. cannot be because with a divorce, divorce is very personal because of the fact that you are in the relationship. Right. There's a, a, a contract binding the two of you, right. and you want that contract set aside, mm -hmm. you know, by way of divorce. But in this particular matter, where you are dealing with an election, where the presidential candidate, you know, is usually not even. I mean, engage, except for campaigning, he's not engaged in the day-to-day -day administration of, mm. you know, the electoral process. All right. All right. How can you say that those are, I mean, within the person's okay. personal knowledge? So you take, okay. that is why the general right. secretary let, let me, is let me, testifying, let, and your party chairman is also testifying. Going yeah, good. Just, let, me, let me go to... <laughs> let me he go has to, the power of attorney. Let me go to, <laughs> let me go to <laughs> Martin, the Martin and Dennis briefly. Uh, we have very limited time to go. Yes, uh, Martin, what will be your comments? Maybe final before we proceed. And again, how, what, how, how are you looking to how things will, will pan out uh, from Monday? Okay. So, um, as they've already read the authorities, there are even more. Uh, just about three years ago, in the case of um, Hydrofoam Estate West Okai, another Supreme Court decision, you find Benning JSE reiterating the principle that the Plaintiffs need not testify. So, and even before the in Ria Shalibutri, there, there are older cases from the 80s and all that. So, this principle has been well settled in our jurisprudence that a plaintiff need not testify. Hmm. Going forward from Monday, uh, I must say that the case is taking shape. I'm impressed at the speed yesterday in terms of how much grounds was covered. The fact that uh, Mr. Amenuvo finished his course examination, mm. and then uh, Mr. Akutuan Pao start, uh, started. All so right. that th this is good. So okay. hopefully, All as right. I said, me, I'm looking forward to the conclusion of the trial. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. The so and, 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 and Dennis, uh, you through your uh, Dennis Law mm. uh, publicized widely the principle that the petitioner need not testify, as was being erroneously peddled around that that was so um, injurious to, to the petitioner's case. What do you have to say before we go? Uh, Samson, this is, a, this is a quick one. We, we, what we seek to do is to state what the law is. As in how it will be interpreted will be up to both parties to do. So for instance, in terms of 2013, uh, the petitioner in the person of uh, uh, Mahmoud Baumia testified. And, and the law report confirmed that he, was, he testified in his testimony. So there's no dispute about it. Right. What I will end in terms of concluding is for us to allow the court to work. And possibly, even if practitioners will comment on it, I think it should not be immediately after coming out of court. Because when they come out of court immediately, their adrenaline is high. Hmm. And, and sometimes these statements are made. So I will just, I will hope that the court will caution both parties in terms of their expressions that they have made. Because if you look at the news report, most of the reports sometimes take the toll of the commentary that was rendered by both parties' practitioners so that at least we can guide. And look, looking at the experience in 2013, you realize that most of the commentary became more friendly after the court bears teeth on contempt issues and, and, and stuff. So I hope our, our, our colleagues who are after, after mm. court will not comment on saying 
and possibly if they are commenting, right. they should okay. train themselves okay. so that we don't we don't get into that. All right. Of, of All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I have just a minute to go. The, well, I mean, let, let me just 15 me seconds. Well, my yeah. point is that let us continue to have faith in the country. Right. That for me, I always say that is the best gift God ever gave us. Okay. We have bold, fearless judges, and who will look at the matter <coughs> based on the law, the facts, mm. and of course the oath okay. that they have taken. You you will not say any less, right? Well, I, I would add that, uh, you know, uh, there's a need for some level of uh, even-handedness, you know, as far as uh, the parties are concerned. Okay. And uh, yesterday, the court uh, said, you know, there should be some parity of treatment. I hope that that continues. Thank you very much. Dr. Dominic Ayene is MP for Boga East and member of the legal team of John Mahama. Yao Pong is also a member of uh, Nanako Fado's legal team. Martin Pebu, Dennis J, uh, are also lawyers. Uh, thank you also very much and have a good afternoon. God willing, next week we we'll come your way with another edition of News File. I'm Samson Ladia Yanini. <laughs>